welcome to Totally Integrated Instrumentation. During this video we're going to take a look at the Siemens remote I.O. called the ET200 ISP. So I've put a few posts about how we can connect to this, how we can figure this with PCS7 and, and how we can um, use uh, this I.O. for digitalization. So just have a little look into this and see how, why it's so powerful. It's remote I.O. that's designed to sit in a, a um, complete assembly which includes a, a stainless steel enclosure and it's designed to sit in a uh, ATEX zone 1 for gas or zone 22 for, for dust. So that's the cabinet itself. The I.O. Uh, has built-in barrier packages so you don't have to add any more barrier cabinets to this so the signals going out to your instrumentation your sensors your digital inputs whatever you want to, to wire to this it is going to be zone zero e exia it's really flexible so we can have this with um, two red redundant power supplies two redundant header modules and various amounts of uh, IO so you can see here 256 digital and 128 analog we still have the Profibus DP bottleneck on the ET200 uh, module itself uh, where we're limited to about roughly about 250 bytes so you have to be careful with that so if you start bringing back the heart signals don't forget you get five bytes for every heart value um, but you're also going to get the two bytes for your analog signal as well so um, six bytes seven bytes sorry in total um, I did go to school uh, so that's the the module it, itself uh, good for redundancy the real nice thing about it is you can't see it on this picture but um, you can mix up your um, uh, safety io and your normal io on the same rack okay so you don't have to have a separate cabinet like you do with some manufacturers where you have all your safety io on a separate cabinet if we have a look at um, uh, the build-up of this if you've never seen it before it's designed to be hot swappable so let's look at the IO cards first the IO cards can be removed and plugged back in with the power on um, it's uh, you could see down there that the terminals are EXIAIB as I suggested and the Profibus DP coming in is EXIB which we'll come on to in a minute we have an intrinsically safe um, power supply that can either be 24 volts or 230 and then right at the top you have your interface module which is the ET200 module itself so what we have to do is configure this because this sits in a, a, in a stainless steel enclosure and it's, and it's um, pre-approved so that's the bit where we've got to be careful now what you can't see on this picture is that you can actually when you spec the cabinet size up you can specify spare modules which is well worth doing because we know that uh, um, we always run out of IO on particular projects or as our plant grows we, we run out of IO modules if you put the spare module in there it's already certified so you can take the spare module out if you need some more analog inputs you can slide those in and then you can you can wire them up the cable glands if you purchase the box a certain size the cable glands will already be there uh, ready to go I'll just put this slide up um, there's a lot there's a lot more IO cards than what you can see here but what I really wanted to, to draw your attention to was the analog input modules and the analog output modules so you have to be careful when you're specifying the heart analog input modules and they always come with heart so um, it's ready for digitalization there is a two wire card and a four wire card okay so you have to be careful that you, you, you get the right one and the analog output card is um, is, is active um, and that comes with heart on 
as well and all of these come with short circuit wire break uh, and if you if you enable the heart diagnostics you'll get the heart diagnostics coming from the card as well another nice feature is the partnership that Birkit and Siemens have if you've got a valve pneumatic valves on off valves that need controlling then you can add the uh, the Birkit valve island for one of a better word into to the cabinet and have that um, uh, pre-assembled uh, ready to go so you don't have to add it in yourself um, so we're really you know covering all bases here for, for process automation so what does it look like when it's uh, put together in a system um, we're showing um, particular PLCs uh, at the top so the S7 uh, 400H so that's a, a redundant system and then you've got the 300 400 system at the top but that could quite easily be a, an S7 um, uh, 1500 right, something, something like a 1516 I've got a profitless DP port on um, what you have to have is you have to make that profibus DP signal that goes out into the field EXIB so in the safe area probably be in the same cabinet or in close proximity to where your, your DCS or your PLC is you have to have uh, uh, this RS485 intrinsically safe coupler and that gives you IB output on the output and that's what will go off to your uh, ET200 ISP zone 1 cabinet there are options for fiber optic if you if you need to do that um, but um, that's uh, I believe is a non Siemens part in the in the cabinet we can still do it but I don't think it's covered in the configuration tool that we're going to see in a minute so you can do a redundant system or you can do a single system but you need to specify that up front which is probably the only tricky bit regarding this IO but the good news is it's in the TIA portal configuration tool so what does it look like when it's completely assembled you can see there on the right hand side uh, the the metal enclosure so that's what you get um, and there's an example there with the Birkit valve island so you can see your pneumatics dropping off there isn't much IO on that um, but uh, as long as it's within the the, the limit you know which is going to be the size of the cabinet you can build it up to what you want and as I said try and always build some spare capacity into to whatever you can um, uh, design and the reason for that this is a completely uh, approved cabinet so what we're going to do next is going to have a look at the configuration tool which is a free tool you can either use it online or you can download it I'm going to show you how to um, specify one of these these cabinets to find the TIA portal configuration tool if you just type in TIA portal configuration into your search engine and it should take you pretty much straight to where you need to, to go um, as I said there is a, a downloadable version of this and you can see here um, when you download it uh, every time you connect to the internet um, and you try and open this it will try and update it but the, I always find if you use the cloud version um, it, you know it's always up to date so there we go it's open we're ready to go uh, we're going to add a new device and, and in here you can put your, your controllers and everything else but we're going to go straight to our IO system because that's what we're, we're going to try and spec up and it's ET200 ISP and you, you can start putting in um, yeah, filling in this questionnaire here and do it that way if you want um, but what I tend to do is go straight to con configuration and if you click on the, the module slot it should should bring up the options okay so we're building a standard Unix we haven't select uh, redundancy at the top end uh, 
and this will add all of the the backplane modules and part numbers in for that as well now what we've got here our, our rack size goes up to, to 35 um, slots but we need to specify the cabinet as well so if we have a look at accessories we can under here we'll see enclosure then we got the option for standard enclosure you can see here there's an option with the uh, Burkitt valve island in um, if we go for enclosure with the ET200 ISP we want hazardous area gas and then you get your two sizes so if we go for the 650 mil we'll go for the smaller one and then um, under here uh, we, de we determine um, the type of uh, cable glands and, and mounting arrangement so we're, we'll, we'll go for the M20 with blue plastic okay so that enclosure is added and when I go back to my configuration if I try and add more slots it physically you know it, it won't let me you know so I can't exceed the width of, of the uh, the enclosure here it's quite clever so we can start adding our modules so you can see there we've added um, our heart input modules and then we need to make sure we've got some spare capacity in here so let's see if we can find these spare modules there's your reserve module there so so there you go the width of the installation model exceeds the rack so it knows the size of the rack because of the size of the enclosure so I wanted to um, make you aware that you know that uh, it, it's not going to allow you to make mistakes so I need to um, remove some of those cards so for the size enclosure that I've got I can, I can install 15 uh, modules you, you can see here of course the actual system itself will take take more but because I've selected the the smaller cabinet I'm, I'm limited on the uh, modules that um, I can put in now the, the, like I said previously the one thing it's not taking into consideration each one of these cards can bring back four heart variables okay um, so I can't have all of that heart information um, coming back because it's going to start swamping this 250 uh, byte limit that I've got on, on the header card. So really that's where you know your uh, Profinet come, comes in to play. Um, but this is the, the IO that we have at the moment which is Sound Profibus DP. Um, and really to, to to get at the digitalization we don't have to bring back the heart variables the really nice thing that we can do is we can just enable the heart and allow maintenance station to grab the diagnostics acyclically without using any more memory and wasting up our 256 bytes and that's what digitalization is all about getting at your, your install base without adding complexity to your uh, automation project so wherever you've got these installed you've got analog inputs and outputs with heart functionality that can be easily enabled that's going to help you continue your journey uh, towards your digitalization goals so thank you very much for listening hope it proved useful and don't forget to click on the subscribe button to, to keep in touch with future videos. Thanks for listening.